I'm Alan Marston. And I'm Kira Clapper. NBC 24 Action News at 5 starts now. You're watching Action News at 5 on NBC 24. Live, local, late breaking. We begin with breaking news out of Trinity County, where fire crews are working to get a fire under control. It's currently burning three and a half acres and was reported just about two hours ago on Steiner Flat Road in Douglas City. The sheriff's office is evacuating Douglas City Elementary School. We'll keep you updated as more information becomes available. A 15-year-old girl is hospitalized after being violently attacked and sexually assaulted in Paradise early Friday morning, and she wasn't the only girl attacked that night. Another 15 15-year-old girl also was assaulted, and police believe they have the 17-year-old juvenile responsible for at least one of the attacks in custody. Action News reporter Derek Demo spoke with police and joins us now with more on what they're saying. Derek. Alan and Kira, police aren't saying too much at this time, but they are telling us they do believe both the attacks are related. Police say the incidents happened around one Friday morning near the Paradise High School. Police weren't notified about the attack on one of the girls until hours later and then received word on Saturday another girl was hospitalized at the Feather River Hospital. Police are not saying how seriously that girl is injured, but sources tell Action News she has major injuries and has since been transferred to a hospital in Oakland for treatment. Police say both girls appear to have been sexually assaulted and again, they believe those crimes are related. They have arrested a 17-year-old male, which they now have in custody at Juvenile Hall. So an investigation identified a 17-year-old uh, juvenile male as being responsible for at least one of the sexual assaults on the 15-year-old girl that reported it on Friday. As far as whether the suspect knew either of the girls and was even responsible for both those attacks, police are not saying they do believe other suspects were involved in the incident and are trying to identify them. Police also tell Action News that the girls were not able to give them an exact location as to where the attacks happened. All they know it was somewhere near the Paradise High School. Live in the newsroom for NBC 24 Action News, I'm Derek Demo. Thank you, Derek. A Linda woman is behind bars accused of stabbing her boyfriend to death. Yuba County Sheriff's deputies were called out to the East Linda Garden Apartments on College View Drive around 8.30 last night. They found the victim with stab wounds to his upper body. Emergency responders attempted CPR, but the man died at the scene. Deputies say the victim's girlfriend reportedly stabbed him during an argument and that her two children were home at the time. The names of both the suspect and the victim are being withheld until family members have been notified. We have an action news update now on the man found dead on an Anderson sidewalk. The Shasta County Coroner says the man was stabbed to death Saturday night. 31-year-old Sue Saturn of Oakland was leaving a birthday party at Anderson City Hall when he got into a fight. He was stabbed in the chest and died there at the scene. Police have not yet identified his attacker or found the weapon. They did detain 11 people, you may recall, for questioning. You're urged to contact Anderson Police if you have any information. A Reading man is behind bars tonight accused of violently beating his girlfriend in front of her two-year-old child. It happened just before 8 last night on Layton Road. Police say 25-year-old Javier Torres and the victim were in a heated argument when Torres became violent, forcing the woman to the ground, kicking her in the head and body, and slamming her face into the ground. A witness intervened, allowing the victim to get away and call police. Torres was found later at a friend's apartment on Hartnell Avenue. It took the help of a police dog to take him into custody. Torres was booked into the Shasta County Jail. Marysville police are looking for two armed men who attacked and robbed two bicyclists. Police say the victim and a friend were riding on the 900 block of I Street just after 11 Sunday night when they were approached by two men, one armed with a gun. The men demanded money, beat the woman in the head with the pistol, and she suffered a concussion. Her friend was able to run for help and a passing driver called 911. The attackers fled with the victim's bikes and a backpack. They're described as being in their late teens or early 20s with shaved heads and no facial hair. Call Marysville Police if you have any information. In Chico, letters are going out to Cal Water customers after the company's after-hours lockbox was broken into. Company officials say it happened between July 29th and August 1st. They have no idea how much money was taken, how many customers may have been affected, but they say there are typically 75 payments in the lockbox over any given weekend. Cal Water has removed the box since then and is now working on a different different after hours option for customer payments. Meanwhile, customers are urged to check their account status to make sure all payments have been credited. A serial scam artist convicted of accepting money under false pretenses appeared in court today. George Stanley was scheduled to have a restitution hearing this morning. 
But a Butte County judge ruled to give the defense more time to file a brief for the case. Stanley will find out how much he will have to pay in restitution after September 13th. A sentencing date was also set for February 10th of next year. Stanley was arrested for masterminding a huge statewide construction scam that included at least half a dozen victims in the North State. A freak accident involving an eagle lands a motorcycle rider in a Reading hospital. It happened over the weekend on Highway 36 West. The CHP says Josh, Joshua Fisher of San Carlos was riding his motorcycle west of Ball Road at about 55 miles per hour when a golden eagle flew into his path, hitting his helmet. The impact killed the bird and caused Fisher to fly off the back of his bike. He was life lighted to Mercy Medical Center with moderate injuries. Water service crews had a bit of a mess to clean up in Chico this morning. A man backed his truck into a fire hydrant outside a business off 22nd Street and Park Avenue. Just after 8 o'clock this all happened, well, water went gushing across the parking lot and Cal Fire crews were called in. Firefighters shut off the water and workers with the Department of Water Services began pumping all the water out. No one was injured. The Reading City Council will be discussing a DUI crash from way back in 1979 at tonight's meeting. North State Mothers Against Drunk Driving want to put a memorial plaque at the site of the crash that killed a mother and her child. That case prompted changes in California's DUI laws, making it possible for drunk drivers to be charged with murder if they kill someone while behind the wheel. What happened with this case is that it set precedent for the, uh, for the law, for the legislators, that if someone chooses to drive after they've been drinking and they do kill someone, they can be charged with murder. If approved by the council, the plaque will be placed on city land near the corner of Cypress and Parkview Avenues. Reading Mayor Missy MacArthur thinks closed session city council meetings could use some reworking. Currently, the closed session meetings happen after the city council has discussed all the regular items, but MacArthur wants to move the sessions to take place before the regular city council meeting. Well, basically, this will give us the transparency that the people have access to us since the doors aren't locked. And we didn't realize, like I said, that they were being locked. And it will um, save money in terms of not having to have a guard. Well, in the past, the council was forced to make people exit the chambers. While they conducted the closed session meetings, people had no option but to wait outside for the results. MacArthur hopes this will no longer be the case. The Orland City Council has made a decision not to renew City Manager Paul Posebutt's contract, meaning his last day in office will be October 31st. The council also considered another option last night. One option is once Posebutt leaves office is to have a city administrator rather than a city manager, which would shift the role of hiring or firing department heads back to the council. As for the future of Police Chief Paula Carr, Posebutt says he hopes to have a decision about her employment status by the end of the week. A performance evaluation for Willow's city manager, Steve Holsinger, is scheduled to take place at tonight's city council meeting. Mosquito fogging is planned for several areas in Butte County tonight. The county's Mosquito and Vector Control District will be spraying pesticides in the Hamilton City, Honcutt, Nelson, and Richville areas from 8 until about 11. Obviously, Hamilton City is... Uh, not in Butte County, but as part of the district. The operation could be canceled if weather conditions are unfavorable. You can see maps of the areas that will be sprayed by going to our website and clicking on news links. Well, speaking of unfavorable weather, I think we've been having pretty favorable weather. Yeah. Let's send it over to Chris Kuyper in the AccuWeather Center for more. Hey, Chris.